so uh, my quadrant has uh, 296 fats, mixture of uh, small and uh, big ones, and all of them are actually on the lower side of the shells, not exposed to the water. I mean, to the sun. And uh, when it's below, uh, everything that is exposed to mud is not covered with fat. And um, uh, you can see the, the different sizes of the fat. I didn't measure them, but it's uh, much more abundant than we expected. And this side is definitely not covered with uh, sea lettuce. And we'll see how much uh, uh, fat did uh, any cut. Also, I got uh, uh, like six oysters that were covered below this area. Uh, the tide is coming up. So, as you can see here, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six oysters in this area. muddy, so they're just like sticking there out, and they are here, you can't really see them, I'm trying, this one is suffocated with mud, it's dead, this are still a little bunch trying to survive here, a little out, so my suggestion is to actually have higher couch like in this area, and uh, or survival of the bats would be better, and you can see the sites that are really covered with the sea lettuce. Oysters are a little bit suffocated either with the mud or with the sea lettuce. We saw also a lot of juvenile fish and crabs here, but the area uh, where there is more mud and more uh, sea lettuce, you can see where it just uh, stops with the fat stop attaching themselves. And uh, there are some very small ones, like here. So here it's actually, actually even less. The number is like in 70s in a half, half a meter, square meter. There are not maybe a few uh, bats on this uh, little reef. And those are from recent spawning, but there was this shell, I don't know if somebody placed it or not, but there were um, fats on the other side, and you can see the open ones, for some reason, some of them are probably not going to survive, because they're exposed either to heat, um, but they were on this other side, so I'm assuming if the shell was brought uh, by the current and landed on the top of this small reef where there are mainly uh, rib mussels and uh, young oysters, six, probably half a year old. Um, it's just uh, unfortunate. And probably the current is, they're probably not spawning yet, they're too young. And here you can see how all the sea lettuce starts floating. And maybe we can just have a kayak action of removing it and drying, the, drying it for nitrogen. I just put some of this on our kayaks 
but it's huge amount of nutrients that is uh, basically captured in the sea ladders. So if we could remove it, I don't know, I think it would be much better than just keep it here. So we should check that also as uh, any research done or reference done for removing the ulva from the from this area. A little baby horseshoe crab. Oh my god, it's so adorable. Yes, go Liddy Liddy. Oh. That's awesome. Let me see if I can take a picture of it. There you go, Oh my god. Adorable. But our question here was, is there a salt marsh and uh, oyster symbiosis here? The big mud flat with a little bit of, uh, where there was a 3D, a little exposure uh, of the reef. It's successful for the oysters and then also for the salt marsh to proliferate. It's very silty. That's how I found those, this little beautiful horseshoe crab, and I digged in. Silty, but there is not much uh, uh, sea lettuce. There is a little, but it's interesting to know why don't they culture here. It looks like a perfect spot for culturing and creating little oyster here. What do you say? Hi.